welcome back to Lake Missoula Tea Company's Tea Talk with me and Heather. I'm Bunila and I work with R&D. I do lots of work with the blends, making sure what you drink tastes good. And um, I'm Heather, as Ganilla said, I'm one of the owners and I help Ganilla with tasting and I order a lot of the big orders, um, international orders. It's kind of my role at the company and help guide, you know, which teas we're going to offer, stuff like that. Um, today we decided we wanted to talk to you about our Jasmine teas. Uh, we're excited to be able to share with you the three that we carry. And the first one is our Jasmine Green. And a jasmine green is coming from the ancient tea trees um, in Yunnan in China. Ancient tea trees are kind of where tea kind of came out of. And I'm gonna, before I get too far into that, um, Ganilla is gonna be brewing the teas as we talk about it. But what she's specifically doing is measuring out five grams per 16 ounces. These are 16 ounces. And we're just using these really simple sieves to do our tastings with today. Um, it lets the tea open up and breathe and it allows like the five grams that we're putting in for 16 ounces to really be able to infuse well. Yeah. I'm so just going to go ahead and... She's going to be doing that while I'm talking about that. So I was saying that the Jasmine Green, we source from um, the, the tea trees in Yunnan and um, it's organic. We're really happy to offer that. We also have um, from the same area, we have our um, Jasmine Poir. So Puar is a um, aged Chinese tea, but it's also infused with jasmine. Our third tea that we offer is coming from China, not from the ancient tea trees, but it is from coming from China. It's our jasmine pearls. The cool thing about these pearls, so you can see um, that it's, they're rolled. So when you're doing this, see, they're just, it just doesn't take very much. Half of this would do one cup. So this is enough for two cups. But the thing about this also is we tell people, try brewing this like three or four times because the flavor really holds with the, this particular yeah. tea. And it's fun to see how these um, open up once you start steeping them. You can't see it in here, but we can pour out the leaves after they're done steeping. So you can see how they go from little, little balls into like the full tea leaves. So Ganilla um, just put the water in here. The first one she did, the water was at roughly 200 to 212, which 212 is boiling. Um, and then uh, she went to the jasmine green and the pearls, the pearl, the green and the pearls, and kind of a standard rule for green tea is brewing it at 170, 175. Yeah. If you do it too high, it's gonna be too sharp and bring out the tannins. If you like it that way, great. But if your green tea is sharp, and it's just a little bit like biting, you don't like it, try lowering your water temperature. It's the biggest like aha moment I get with customers when we talk about brewing tea. When I tell people really mind the temperature with green tea, because it's, and so many people just discard green tea, like it doesn't taste good, it's bitter, it's, and then when they come to the shop and we talk and I brew them a cup and it's like, wow, they have no idea that green tea can taste like this. And all because of brewing it too hot. So I, I guess I've seen that when, you know, you'll give a sample at the tea shop and someone will say, oh, I don't, I, you'll give them a sample and they're like, yeah, I don't really like green tea. And like, well, that was just a green tea. And they really yeah. love it. So it's surprising how good green tea can taste. Have you heard Kayla talk about how she didn't even like green tea and now it's one of her favorite yeah. teas. And it was all about her. This is an employee that we have and a fairly new employee and her just learning that brewing the water at the right temperature is like night and day with liking tea. Yes. Yeah. I had a lady come into the tea shop and she just came up to me and the first thing she said was, I hate matcha. Yeah. And that's like, that's, she didn't <laughs> say hi or anything, just I hate matcha. And of course I go like, Okay, <laughs> and we chat and we talk and I convinced her to try um, one of our matcha drinks. I like, can I make you a matcha and yeah. see if you like it? Yeah. And she ended up buying three different kinds oh my of goodness. our matcha. That's and amazing. Just loving it. Well, the, the situation is that the quality of the tea really matters, especially with matcha. And then once you understand, like conceptually, that you're only supposed to use 
five grams, which is like a tablespoon. It's not a ton of tea. And people think, oh, more tea, more, more flavor. It's like, it doesn't really work that way. You'll burn it. Um, and also the time. Yeah. yeah. So Ganilla just gave this three minutes, but now she's taking the tea out. And so a little bit about jasmine, well, the, all the jasmines we carry is the tea is not flavored. It's infused with jasmine. And so all three of these teas are a series of layering jasmine petals and letting it sit and kind of be with the tea and then adding more jasmine petals and letting it sit and be with the tea. That's what's giving this tea flavor. Yeah. It's not actually a flavor being applied. So that's, I think that's cool about our particular jasmine. Yeah. And you can see all the little white petals in, in all the teas here. I'll dump them out so we can look at it. So this is the poire very visible like lots of little white flower petals in it and flower stems and like whole little it's it's quite awesome to see and this is the the jasmine pearl and once it's steeped once and this this can make like so many more cups of tea and i would actually you used to say or you usually say go more but with the pearls go less, go less. time over sure because it's opened up and now it's really like it's primed for now it's ready to really extract, extract the saying. flavor yeah so two minutes for the second steep, steep. yeah because the three can... minutes opens it up two minutes would be the second steep and then from there on you go and, and add go more at more time yeah and actually the person the people that i the family i get this from they think seven steeps on this one. Oh yeah 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 which i believe I, I think, I this, is, like I think this is probably the best jasmine you can get in the United States. <laughs> so these are both green teas and we're going to talk about the differences in flavor when we're, when we're going to taste these here in yeah. a minute. But we also wanted to point out that this jasmine green was the one that was mentioned in the Washington Post yeah. that Ann Patchett, who is an author that we think is awesome, that she said that this was her favorite tea. So we were so very happy to hear that. So Ann Patchett is a really prolific writer. Um, and we were really fortunate for her to somehow yeah. find us and really enjoy and mention us. us and mention us too. So we're going to leave this here. You can keep yeah. looking at that while we're tasting and describing our, um, the, the, the notes and things we notice in the tea. We'll start with the, with the Jasmine green, holy. I mean, it just smells jasmine -y right yeah. off the bat. I feel like Jasmine is a love or hate. Sure. It's very perfumey very like it just smells like a bouquet of flowers so and it's so fragrant yeah and i just smell i smell flowers yeah i smell jasmine and when i'm done sipping i still have jasmine on my lips but not with a bite at all not no there's but no bite maybe really clear and clean at the same time if that makes sense no bitterness at all and so now we're going to, from the jasmine green, we'll go to the jasmine pearl and we'll see how those two are, they're, they're both similar, but how are they different? I got oop, fingers made of, I don't, I don't <laughs> I mean, do we even have our fingertips yeah. anymore? They're just callous, so I can. <laughs> More floral. I would tell me, like to me, this is really like clear and clean and this is really pillowy. Yeah. That's how I'm noticing it now. Or how would you describe it? I feel like the jasmine is a little more milder. It's not as like in your face perfumey jasmine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as the jasmine green. Got it. It's more like a, like. More like, billowy. Yeah. Billowy, but in the background more? Mm-hmm. But very present at the same time. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's right there, but it's like to me personally, I don't like it when it's too up front. Too up front. So the, the jasmine pearls are my, they're your go-to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the second steep will be, I feel like it's the second steep will have a little more jasmine-y flavor even than the first. Cause it takes, it takes time for the balls to like unfurl and open and 
So I'm thinking that this, they haven't even fully extracted yet. They were able yeah. to open up, but now you're really ready to brew. Then them. they're now they're like prime for right. It. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing how much tea, how much tea this such a small amount can yeah. produce. And there there's less visible tea petal or flower petals yeah. in the pearls. So it makes sense that it's not as strong jasmine flavored. Yeah. But it's still like, there's no doubt in my mind that it's jasmine. Very tea. jasmine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think historically, this one, the, the jasmine green, we've been, we've carried this for probably 10 years, that um, the lot will change on it occasionally. And sometimes it's more intense and less intense. And yeah. I know that um, the farm is making this more, the stronger intentionally right yeah. now so that does change you know it's but the thing with tea is it's an agricultural product yeah. and people are these are artists and tea farmers and so they're making it by hand and things will shift slightly so i know that this um i know it's stronger now and different than it was yeah. yeah well it makes sense like and weather and like everything right affects the the crops and right so she's getting at that concept to, about tawar yeah how the concept of tawar will affect like she said, the weather, the temperature, the people, the culture, the, the soil. jasmine, the soil, the jasmine that year yeah. is all going to affect that particular year's um, flavor of tea. Yeah. Let's see some um, poir. I haven't had poir in a long time. I just wanted to say this one was extremely just so smooth and no bitterness at all. Zero, none, 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 none. Like, Compared the two, that like I can taste the green tea in the first, and it's got like it's not sharp or anything, but you can that's a green tea, and this one is just like more, more this. It's just yeah, blended or it's just, like it's melding so well the the jasmine and the green tea that it just becomes this this own little thing, not distinct, yeah. not two separate, but all one together. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this one is distinctly jasmine and green tea, and right. this one is just like delicious. And here's the poir, very different color. So poir sometimes has like a like a coffee texture sometimes, or kind of a body like that. Yeah. Um, I also think that this particular poir is a really good way to get introduced to it if you're not familiar, because it's something you're taking jasmine, which a lot of people know and understand. <laughs> and putting it with something that's a little bit different, you know? So when I smell this, I can smell the, I can smell the jasmine, but I also smell what I will describe Puar as having a barn smell. Yeah. But when you drink it, it's just, just so smooth. You know, it's just, it's a really interesting experience to it drink Puar tea. Yeah. Very earthy and, but these two together are just like, it's just the perfect note. It is. Yeah. yeah. Someone, yeah. If someone is curious about Puar in the tea shop, I will, I will recommend this because it just going straight for a shoe Puar can be kind of a. You're can, wondering what is you, this, and if you don't like it, it'll deter you from all other Puars. Whereas, like, if you ease into it a little bit, yeah. Just, and this is the perfect tea to do that with because it's not. You don't get that. It's not just it the, the earthy, yeah. earthiness of the poir. It's also, it's like lightened up with the floral yeah. of the jasmine. I think you could also, all of these could be rebrewed oh, yeah. easily. Obviously the middle of the pearls many times, but I think this, both of these could be rebrewed and the flavor's going to change. Um, I just, this, I'm gonna actually get some more. Yeah. Okay. I remember when you were um, thinking about not carrying the jasmine poire anymore and me and Sack, one of my co-workers were both like are you insane yeah <laughs> what are you thinking sometimes you have to throw things out there to see what throw it against the wall to see what happens <laughs> yeah. and it's like okay i just was just checking yeah yeah uh, never mind yeah yeah <laughs> just just it. curious but understanding too that teas are not an endless supply like farmers run out and like and then we run out like if we can't always supply it's it, it's not an infinite resource. Yeah. That's that, that's a really good point. We were kind of talking about that at a staff meeting earlier today, and just knowing that you know we work with a family that does this, and we project orders, and sometimes we we might run out or we might not order correctly, and there's a lot of factors that yeah. 
make the tea available on the shelf at that time. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting point. <laughs> yeah. So we hope that you have a greater understanding of jasmine and tea, and especially with what we have to offer. And just to be really clear about it, this is our jasmine green organic. This is our ja our, our dragon phoenix jasmine pearls. Yeah. They're rolled leaf style. And then we have the jasmine puar. Uh, they're all coming from China. These, this one and this one are coming from um, Yunnan uh, around the um, around the Sichuanbana area. And we work with a particular farm on Jingmai Mountain. We also get this tea from them, but they source it from another area of China. So, um, and they are very consistent with, um, you know, they just do a really good job with yeah. it. You know, but as I was saying, there are slight adjustments maybe with the intensity and kind of shifting because they're they're adjusting things themselves too, um, like we do with our blends. But, yeah. Um, we'd encourage you to go to our website, LakeMissoulaTeaCompany.com, um, read about or look at some of the photos that are associated with this farm. And um, if you really like what you're hearing and seeing on uh, this pot or this on this tea talk. Go ahead and like us, tell your friends, and you can go to Instagram and like us too. We appreciate it. It does a lot for our company. Um, we appreciate you a ton. Thanks. Thank you.